an event that breeds champions. A special kind of competitor is required for a special kind of challenge. Performing time after time, keeping calm under pressure. Where split second decisions can mean success, failure. Riding on a knife edge at 30 knots. Situated in the touristic heart of the French Riviera, the city of Nice welcomes Act 7 of the Extreme Sailing Series, presented by Land Rover. This is the third time the Extreme 40s have raced in this city, and it has a reputation. Until it's delivered some of the most spectacular conditions ever seen on the tour. We're back in Nice and it very much looked a bit like last year where we're going to see a very strong breeze, big waves, so it's going to be really challenging here. Sometimes the, uh, the fronts come through and the east wind blows and today we have that. Looks like actually the rest of the weekend we're going to have some rough weather and creates a pretty good seaway and uh, I think it's going to be some good action. It's the penultimate act. It's building to what could be a head-to-head -head between Alinghi and the Wave Muscat for the overall series title. But right behind, it's far from clear who will claim the remaining podium spot. Red Bull are an established name here. This is their fourth year on the tour. They've never made the overall series podium and will be looking to make this their year. Standing between them and their goal, relative newcomers, SAP Extreme Sailing Team. This is only their second year on the tour, but looks set to challenge the Australians. Just it, yeah? Huh? Hold on. <laughs> but if the Red Bull skipper's worried, it's not showing. Oh, it's definitely our goal to be on the podium in the overall series. So, I mean, uh, we said this uh, from the beginning. We're fighting for that. We are third now overall, just two points ahead of SAP. But uh, you always have to be aware. I mean, they're catching up quite quick. We are ready for the fight. The man facing up to him, SAP's Yes Graham Hansen. I think now we're getting a good understanding of the boat and, you know, with our background, we're used to, to sail very close. So uh, I think we might have a, a little edge on them there. We know Roman and the team there, they're really uh, good sailors. I definitely think that we're getting uh, very close to them. After bringing New Zealander Kinley Fowler into the team, Red Bull are looking to see what new talent can deliver. It was a good opportunity to get Kinley on the boat. Uh, he uh, is used to sail on the Extreme 40, he was doing it in the past and uh, now he's, uh, he has a lot of experience from the America's Cup when he teamed up with Oracle. It's always good to have some, some fresh minds in the boat and uh, coming up with some new things. As for SAP, well, they've got quite a different attitude. Personally, I've always been a strong believer in, uh, in keeping a team together. Uh, maybe that's just my personality, that I like to be around uh, the same guys. I think that we are a good team, but we're also good friends. And of course, we have sometimes, you know, tough times. But at the end of the day, we, we believe that it's important to stay together. And for Red Bull, the stakes are high. They've missed out on the podium for the last three seasons. I think the whole team would be really upset. It was already close last year. Coming off the podium now, it's uh, pretty hard then. But he's looking forward, not back. It's still uh, two events to go. The last one is double points. And uh, we beat Alinghi and the Wave uh, during the year already. 
So uh, I think we, we have the potential to do it and uh, it's always a goal. You always have to believe it and we believe in it. In a fleet like this, confidence goes hand in hand with experience. There's plenty of that here in Nice. Eight teams are competing, all with proven Olympic, World and America's Cup champions aboard. At the top of the table, the Wave Muscat lead, but Alinghi are just one point behind them. The man with it all to do, helmsman American Morgan Larson. We have our sort of backs against the wall with the Wave. Um, they're sailing really well and, and there's a couple new teams um, with some real talent aboard, so I don't think we can back off at all. We just got to give it everything we have. Sitting up front, British skipper Lee McMillan's on a roll. He's won the last three acts. It'll be fantastic to, to win here. We haven't won in Nice before, so you know last year it was a was a good event, finishing second, and um, we had some pretty tough conditions there too. But we are, you know, focused on the overalls, and and we always have been trying to kind of get ourselves back into the picture, and and so we just got to keep doing the same here. Conditions here in Nice on day one of competition look for boating. With the fleet ordered to reduce their sail area, the umpires are taking no chances. Racing at high speed in excess of 20 knots of breeze is not for the faint-hearted. Well, we came here not knowing what to expect from Nice, and as you can see, it's right on the edge. Look, nothing separating those three. Look at them battling it out. The defending champions are out of the traps fast and seem to be setting the pace. Great teamwork there on board the Wave Muscat as they round that final mark. And that's it, win number two for the Wave Muscat. But their main rivals, Alinghi, are never far behind. Oh, Alinghi there, their teamwork working so hard to make it through these really choppy conditions. It's not easy out there. <laughs> But Alinghi will be very pleased with this, barreling in for their first win of the day, a consistent performance. The SAP and Red Bull battle, well that begins in earnest. SAP and Red Bull now locked together, it's like a match race. So they head downwind around the mark, Jenica's out, the power is really on. They've got to keep the weight right back, otherwise this could be dangerous. They've got to keep the bows out of the water. The back's coming out. This could be trouble. Well, that's it. Jenica, you can see in the water, not attached to the top of the mast. It's game over for these guys today. Back on the dock, their shore team sets to work. Plenty of soul searching as the debrief gets underway. This was not the start they were hoping for. When we came down the end of the wave, we just nose dived in and uh, and we broke the bowsprit and uh, yeah, had to return to the dock. And yeah, we definitely felt that we had good pace and and, uh, and were sailing well. So it's a bit unlucky for us, but yeah, that's what happens. Well, the Danes struggle. It's been a good day for newcomers. Here in Nice, all for one of the French Invitational team, brimming with talent. On paper, they should do well. The key will be getting back into this style of racing and fast. It's been really intense, really hard for us because we had uh, three hours of uh, training before putting the team together on this boat, so it's been pretty tough. But otherwise, the condition for the fleet and uh, the regatta has been awesome. 20, 25 knots of breeze, big sea state, so very challenging, and uh, some good uh, spectacle for the crowd, and it's awesome. Despite recording three podium finishes on just their first day, a record for an invitational team, they're downplaying their chances. Uh, the fleet is really strong, it's getting stronger all the time. We're just going to try to hang there in the middle of the fleet and uh, that'll be already a really good challenge for us. Pretty tough, but we're really enjoying it. At the top of the table, it's a familiar name. The Wave Muscat scored four race wins and lead the fleet. But with three days left, the competition has barely begun. With the wind forecast to increase, weary sailors will need all the rest they can get as they prepare for the start of beachfront stadium racing.
Nice, France, and day two of racing at the Extreme Sailing Series presented by Land Rover. As the city begins its day, things are calm, deceptively calm. The wind is on its way. Quite a big forecast, 20 knots, with gusts to 25 knots and possibly to 30 knots. But the biggest factor here are the big waves with seas to two meters. It's quite dangerous. It's quite challenging on the Extreme 40 and uh, we try and hang on out there but still be pushing hard to, to make a good result. For us probably it's going to be about uh, just looking after the boat really and yeah, yesterday we did that and we were probably a little, we were probably a little bit over cautious so today we uh, might try and push a little bit harder but yeah still in the back of our minds we want to keep this in one piece going into the weekend. But this is what elite level stadium racing is all about. The beachfront race course is simple. The fleet race upwind to a mark, then head downwind to a gate. It's a two-lap race. The winning boat picks up the full ten points, second to nine points, and so on. Out on the course, it's windy. If the average hits 25 knots, racing will be terminated. Right now, it's 20 plus, but it's gusty. With the potential for the wind to peak over the limit, crews will rely on all their skill to bring the boats back in one piece. Points here are critical, especially for SAP and Red Bull. So the Macmillan now, you can see cutting across the whole fleet. He looks pretty early. Can he stay behind the line? Here they go. We know that some boats are over the start line. I can hear Bill Lawrence's voice on the radio. Nick. SAP OCS. Pointing from them, but that's what happens when you push hard, and those guys were pushing. But Red Bull are relishing these conditions. Roman Agar on board Red Bull sailing team taking the win in race 10. It's a dream start for the Austrians. SAP need to recover and fast. Alinghi 2 will be looking for a good race. They can't let the wave Muscat continue to extend their lead. But as conditions continue to deteriorate, just getting the boat around the race course is becoming a challenge. So, 10 seconds to go, Nick. It's all on race 11 here in Nice. Here they go. We are looking at all for one, accelerating across on four. Bow digging in. We've got all for one right in the way of Alinghi, trying to tack out of the way. Alinghi coming across with pace. A uh, really, really tough start there from, from all for one. They forced the Lingy to slow up quite considerably in that, in that situation. SAP out on the left take the lead. But will they have the advantage over Red Bull when they cross? Really, really difficult position here for SAP Extreme. Attack underneath Red Bull with no speed. It, I really do believe here Red Bull's going to roll over them quite, quite easily as we can see that now. The wave must get the familiar faces at the front of the pack looking strong as they just sail past the rest of the fleet. Unbelievable where this has been coming from. The defending champions have an edge. Red Bull must respond. The way Moscow just found that area of acceleration and has seized down towards this one of mark here. Excellent sailing from Lee McMillan. Around the bottom mark, we've got Austria, Red Bull Extreme Sailing in first place. It's a real tight battle between the Swiss and the Omanis for second and third place. In fourth place, it is the other Swiss team, Morgan Larson on board Alinghi, tight at the top. Roman Agar is still looking strong. The battle continues as the two teams career towards the line. This really is very, very tight. Right now, it's a straight drag race. But it looks like there's just eight, seven, eight, six, closing all the time, five, four meters between these two boats. Huge acceleration oh, there from Red Bull. The way you must get going for a jive. Red Bull, of course, oh, is going to have to jive against the finish line, Nick. Absolutely, and I think that early jive for me might be a good one, although Red Bull carried a lot of, lot of boat speed and a lot of wind and had a really, really nice jive, but Lee is sailing to the favoured end of the finish line. It's going to be super close, but my money right now is gone. It's not on anyone. Who gets first across this finish line? The Wave Muscat takes that, but only by a whisker in race 11 this afternoon. That is going to upset Roman Agar beyond belief. Well done, everyone.
really good fight back. It's been another long, exhausting day for the crews. Time now to reflect and review the overall picture. Back on the dock, a wet but a very satisfied Austrian. We felt much better today. I mean, uh, the positions are more settled. Guys know where to pull and what to do in the maneuvers. And uh, also for me, it was easier to make the calls. The guys uh, were working really hard. And for the defending champions, three wins ensured they maintain their position in the lead. Tears in a row that we've come here and the, the wind's been absolutely cranking. As soon as the gun goes, you just you focus and the adrenaline's running, so you just get into the racing. So it's just a solid day. Good days are a bonus, but the overall aim is to wrap up this series. And it hasn't been easy. He's been under constant pressure from his nearest drive. With Malingi performing at every event, we know that they're not going to slip back in this one. So as long as we can do the same, we'll go into the last event with a, with a big head to head. After two days, the Wave Muscat maintain their lead over Alinghi. Red Bull have a solid third place, but face a strong challenge from Real Team and China Spirit. SAP down in sixth, still looking to recover from their disastrous start and get back into this competition. At the halfway stage in Nice, the podium is wide open. But China Spirit, who only joined the tour at the last event, are out of the running. It hasn't stopped them enjoying some success here, though. Yeah, it's been a perfect start for us in China Spirit, and we've managed to be sitting fifth overall at the moment, which is great, and we're in striking distance of fourth, and um, that's the goal today, is to try and jump up one place on the leaderboard. It's a lot lighter airs today. Yeah, hopefully we'll be able to find the pace that we had in the last couple of days in the breezy stuff. With the departure of the stronger breeze, the crews must adapt. Tactics and boat handling are now more important than ever. But will this change the balance of power on the leaderboard? So wind direction has changed. Let's take a look at the course for this race. They head across to the first buoy, the yellow conical, then through a gate, then it's back upwind to the green conical, and then they turn downwind for a sprint to the finish. Real team and a lingy sneaking up round the outside here. And that is a great start for a lingy coming in at speed and from behind. Start Morgan. That's the voice of Anna Tunnicliffe and she seems pretty happy with her skipper. Strong challenge here from Real Team. Frenchman Pierre Panek at the helm. He knows these horses so well. Well, he fought off the early attack and held on for the rest of the race. That's a win for a Lingy. With the Swiss off to a great start, the Austrians are keen to build on yesterday's success. Red Bull here really pushing hard. Wait forward, please. Lee McMillan forward on the pole. Wait forward, he says. You've got to keep the bow down to maximise speed off the start. But great start by Hagara. Neck and neck with China Spirit towards the first mark. Phil Robertson really putting pressure on the double Olympic champion. So then, final leg, looking back there to the French team all for one as the breeze starts to drop across the course. But it's Red Bull who led this race from the start, and they're going to finish it here. It's a win for Red Bull sailing team. So far, so good for the Swiss and Austrian teams. But closing out the opposition is never easy. Uh, it looks like um, SAP Extreme has got a pretty good start where they are. A couple of good races for the Danes keeps their hopes alive, but it could be too little, too late. Up at the top, one team can do no wrong. Lee McMillan currently at the top of the overall leaderboard and leading this act here in Nice. Well, there's the wave from the skipper, and that is a win for the wave buster. The wave finish up the penultimate day with an impressive 28-point lead. Alinghi are under pressure from Red Bull and Real Team. With a leaderboard this tight and the last race of competition worth double points, no one's safe yet. Final day of competition in Nice. For all the teams, the pressure is on to perform. None more so than for defending champions, the Wave Muscat. Just going to go through notes from yesterday. The starts were pretty solid. 
A final chance to come together and reflect for the crew who are one event away from winning back-to-back -back series championships. All through last year and this year we're constantly trying to improve and improve our teamwork, the dynamic within, within this great bunch of sailors. It's very important, it's a big part of our programme. Rob, our coach, is absolutely a critical part of that and making sure that we're on track and bring us back together when it's not working. That, that first run was like there's some massive massive gains and losses to be made on that. The Wave began the season as series favourites, but soon found their dominance challenged as other teams found their feet. Race wins became fewer and those that did come were much harder fought. It's been a challenging season, that's for sure, and um, different challenges this year to last year. Last year it was more about learning how to sail. You know, as a crew, we just had to kind of deal with our own performances and, and this year it's been a different story. There's been more challenges and, and uh, we've had to overcome those as well as keep performing well as a team. Never one to shy away from confrontation. It's clear how much racing here means to him. No one likes the feeling of the pressure at the time, you know, it's, uh, it's intense, the adrenaline, the, the nerves are going, you know, all the way through an event. But, you know, we seem to react well to it. I think I've always reacted well in, under those conditions and, you know, I relish the, the challenge of actually being in a bit of a fight. I certainly feel like I learn from those experiences and that's what makes you a stronger competitor and sportsman. Main rivals Alinghi have been a constant threat, leaving the British skipper no room for complacency. And then it's just the sort of a lingy factor and how we want to uh, how we want to play that if, if we win here and a lingy uh, the points are absolutely critical and, and beating them here means that we you know only have to be within a place of them in Brazil last year we went there in a more comfortable position we absolutely no you know, no less hungry to win this year, if not more hungry to, to go and get the double. We're up for it and we're, we're ready to go out to Brazil, hopefully secure the win here and, and be in a strong position. As racing begins, what's at stake could be the series title. The Wave Muscat and Alinghi both want to secure the full 10 points to take into the final event. A podium spot here for Red Bull means they effectively defeat SAP in the battle for third. Olingi OCS, the Swiss are over the line. Turning back now, they've got well. to recross the start line. It's a terrible mistake for Olingi, who are by no means secure for second in Nice. The series champions are off to a great start. It's a second place and another superb performance from the defending champion. Red Bull heading up this third leg, gaining on GAC Pindar all the time. Red Bull sailing team coming across to take the victory in race 25. A great performance from them at a crucial, crucial time. The Austrians overhaul the Swiss, taking second place for the first time this regatta. But the Swiss aren't done yet. So, Alinghi, the lead, 75 metres and growing all the time. They will be breathing another sigh of relief. But sadly for them, the boat behind them is Red Bull sailing team. The Wave Muscat are now home clear. A fourth puts them out of reach. All attention now shifts to the final race and the fight for second place. They do have the each other on their radar, there is no doubt about it. So it is neck and neck between Red Bull and Lee. Remember, whoever finishes ahead of the other boat gets that second spot on the podium. Now we've talked about this team so much today and squeezing around the mark to take second place overall by the skin of their teeth. It's Morgan Larson on board a Lingi. So Red Bull very narrowly missing out on that second place. A consistent performance, but in the end, it just wasn't enough. But for now, it is all about this man, because Lee McMillan and his crew here are winners in Nice. We had our eye on trying to get a Lingi down to 
to fourth to give ourselves a bit of a buffer in, in Brazil. But you know, Morgan's very experienced in these kind of departments and uh, he had some good exit plans when we tried to engage him and we just weren't able to pin him down into fourth. So you know, it's all close going into Brazil, so it's game on still. They really put the pressure on us and it made it really challenging and kind of got the blood flowing a little bit. The guys on the team uh, um, did a great job. The, you know, when the pressure came on, they really uh, reacted well. And, but that's what, you know, what the good team's about. Just the final act remains. Can the Wave Muscat hold on to retain the series title? Or will Alinghi cause an upset? Can Red Bull secure their first podium in their four-year series history? It's a four-way fight for the overall series podium, but who will win? Find out as we now head to Florianopolis, Brazil for the series finale.